to our webinar on Facebook pages. What we're going to address are what business pages are and how they differ from regular Facebook profiles. We're going to address what the focus of your page should be, how it's going to improve your business, um, how you make one specifically, and of course the really important question, how do you make it easy and workable for you? So the first thing we're going to look at is what exactly is a business page? Now this is Facebook as you all are familiar with. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at two different types of things here. The first one is here's my personal page on Facebook. You'll see it's got my name, it's got information about me, and this is all the places where I put information out or someone shares information with me. This is what has to do with me as a person. But as a lot of you know, I run a business page for the social marketing department. That's what looks like this. It's branded as Social Marketing, a Century 21 Award, as a business. Everything comes out from the business. And the information is a little bit different in terms of what information it asks you for versus if you were to look at the information on my personal profile, it's more about me personally, where I've worked, what my interests are, all of that. On the business page, it's all about your business services. And the questions you get asked are a little bit different depending on the type of business page you set up. So to make this really easy to understand, we're going to look at one of the key differences in Facebook pages versus profiles. Now, if I go to the page of someone I'm not friends with, for example, Linda Bartlett, I see a button here that says Add as Friend. But if I look at the page for Pepsi, I see a button that says Like. Like equals business, friend equals personal. And that's really as simple as it gets. Okay? Now, with the Facebook um, business pages, that's the place for you to really host your commercial activity on Facebook. A lot of people don't know that, but Facebook actually has in its terms and conditions, which you all agree to, and I'm sure everybody read thoroughly when you signed up for Facebook, you will not use your profile for your own commercial gain, which includes selling your status update or using your status updates to sell a service or a product. Okay? A lot of people don't understand that, and they don't think about it when they sign up for a page, and that's where you run into the people, the stories of people having their Facebook profiles shut down or locked out because they're using it for this commercial game. So does it happen frequently? Do, does Facebook frequently come in and shut down a page? No. But you're better off not giving them a reason to do it. Okay? That's not to say that you shouldn't post about your open houses or, or anything like that. Um, but if that's your primary objective and somebody you know, takes issue with it, if they report it to Facebook, chances are they will um, shut you down for that. Okay? Um, so that includes, like I said, your services, your listings, your open house. And yeah, the lines are blurry, but the big thing is just don't give them any reason to come in and shut you down. Okay? So another thing that I get asked a lot is how does having Facebook improve my business at all, whether it's a personal page or, or um, a business page, etc. We're going to look at a couple statistics here. These statistics come directly from Facebook, and a lot of them you guys are familiar with. There are more than 500 million active users on Facebook. But granted, about 70% of them are outside the US. Okay? The average user is connected to 80 community pages, groups, and events. Now, Facebook doesn't include business pages in this, and I'm not sure why they didn't. But still, 80 for an average person, that's a lot. Um, the average person um, has about 130 friends. 50% of active users log on to Facebook any given day. And then also, Facebook mobile is very, very popular and growing in use. Okay? So if you think about just the number of people and the number of time that they're spending on these websites, that should make it worth it in and of itself. However, um, other things that are important to remember is that Facebook is a great way to have a non-invasive touch point with your past clients and your SOI. So when you, um, you know, when you close a transaction, connect with that person on Facebook or get them onto your personal or your business page, whichever you're comfortable with. And then that way you're capable of keeping track of what's happening in their life, um, as well as you know, anytime you write a status update, if they see it in their feed, there's your name and your face. So it's a constant non-invasive touch. And for any new clients or people that you don't know already, you have the ability to provide value to them on a massive scale, and they have the ability to remain anonymous and kind of get to know you before they decide to um, move any further or contact you. Facebook is a great way, along with YouTube, Twitter, all of those things, to give people a feel for who you are as a person. Okay? Um, the last great thing about how this will improve your business is that mostly it's a free marketing source. And you think about all the people that are on Facebook, all the people in and outside the US that are capable of seeing your content, 
that's a free way for you to market. Now, I say mostly free because you do have to spend time on it, but it's manageable, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And there is the potential for you to spend money if you want. It's definitely available for you to hire out what you're doing in terms of creating the pages, creating custom landing tabs, or even managing or, or keeping up with your feed. It's definitely possible to hire that out. I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, and then there's also money that you can spend out on Facebook ads, which some people use and have great success with, some people don't. But their ad system is, is really quite fair. All right, so the big question is how exactly do I make a Facebook page? Um, actually, I wanted to show you guys a couple other statistics here. They're pretty much similar. Oh, I wanted to show you guys the demographics that this um, came up with. Pretty even split male to female. However, if you look at the age demographics that they've got here, they've got between not even 18 and 25. We'll leave that out entirely. But going from 26 up to 54, that's about 50% of the demographic on Facebook. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the demographic that a lot of you are trying to reach. Even if you're going for the younger first-time home buyers, 18 to 34 makes up, again, about half of the demographic of Facebook. So there's a lot of people there that you can reach that are right within the demographics that you're reaching for. So how exactly do you create a Facebook page? It's quite easy. I closed down a couple tabs here. What you're going to do is go to Facebook, and you're going to go to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create dot PHP. If you forget, go to Google and look up create Facebook page. It'll take you right here. Okay? And we're going to go through, I'm going to create a bogus Facebook page. And you're going to notice that there are a lot of different areas here that you can create a page in. There's a cause or a community page. I recommend that you do not click on this one because community pages are opened up to the public and no one person really owns them. Okay? There's an entertainment section. We don't really fit into that, nor do we fit into artist, band, or public figure. Now, if you're creating a Facebook page for a company, you have two options. You've got the space for brand or product, or the space for company, organization, or institution. Either one of those works well, um, as well as local business or place. Most recommended that you go with either the company, organization, or institution, or the brand or product. So if I go into company, organization, or institution, what I'm going to do is look at the categories that they define here. And you'll find that there's not real estate. However, there are different places where you might fit in, okay, in terms of uh, there's, uh, let's see here. Business services, you could feasibly work in there. You could um, feasibly work as a company if you were doing it on a brand level. And then in the brand product section, there's product services in there as well. And then if you look at local business or place, generally this is reserved more for actual brick and mortar locations, but I do see a lot of people using them. There is professional service and there's real estate. So depending on what selection you use, and no one's really come up with a good 100% this is what you need to subscribe to, they're going to ask you slightly different questions in the information section. So we're going to go into here as a company. Actually, we'll go in as a community organization, and it's going to ask for the name. Now, when you think about what you want to brand your page as, the focus really should not be yourself, Tasha Bezdeka Realtor. Because if you think about it, I'm not Coca-Cola, I'm not JetBlue, I'm not Target. Why would someone want to connect with me, Tasha the Realtor? I don't really have anything to offer them the way that these big brands do. However, if you think about using a topic or a location or an idea as the focus of your Facebook page, you're more likely to get people interacting um, and, and have content that's compelling for people to work with. So that's where you might want to think about looking at places like the 365 things to do, the 99 plus. Let's look at a couple of those pages now. So 365 in Vancouver, Washington was really the first page that kind of got this going. And this was created by a guy named Dale Chumbly. And as you can see, he's got 15,000 people created to his, or connected to his page that are interested in things to do in Vancouver, Washington. Um, he did actually for a solid year, and he just finished recently, a new thing every single day. And that's quite a bit of work that he set himself up for. Um, but the organization grew, and people kind of grew with it, and were very interested. And they had some contests and, and uh, scavenger hunt type things and things like that. 
and it became very, very popular and very successful. Now, um, unfortunately, everyone has kind of jumped on this 365 things to do in XYZ City bandwagon. So if you go search, you'll probably find whatever area you're looking for already has a 365 things to do page. So it's become, um, everybody's kind of done it at this point. Another popular one is the 99 plus things to do. It's a little bit less of a, uh, of a commitment from you. You're not saying I'm going to post one new thing every day, but you're saying here's a bunch of things to do based around this topic or this idea. And again, you'll see 631 people are connected and are interested and people are commenting and liking and all of that stuff. So my challenge to you would be to think about the area that you service, think about the communities, think about the people in it, and think about what you could provide to them, either on a broad scale or a very specific scale, such as the gas lamp versus San Diego, or a gated community or something like that. And think of some place where you can provide value to people that's not necessarily being provided elsewhere, um, that will be very useful to them, and that they'll want to come back and check over and over again, they'll want to contribute to, they'll want to communicate with. Okay? You also should do your research in the naming. So, for example, um, you guys are familiar with the idea of cross-branding, and that's the idea that your Facebook B21 social marketing that I've got here should be similar to your YouTube B21 social marketing that I've got here, should be similar to your Twitter B21 social marketing that I've got here. So you should think about the naming that you want to imply. It could be like Dale's, it could be 365 Vancouver WA for Washington. Whatever you want that name to be, you should consider taking a peek to see, does that name already exist? Is anybody already working on it? Um, is it popular or not? Because just because something exists, if there's no activity, nobody's using it, there's still room for you to come in and jump on that bandwagon. Okay? Um, so when you think about the cross-platform usernames, a great place for you to look is the name check. Let's see here. And it's namechk.com. And all you need to do is type in the username that you're considering. For example, C21 Social MKTG. And name check is going to go through and check on your behalf. So Facebook is available, YouTube is available, because I'm using the full social marketing is set out. And it's going to tell you on all the different services if that is available. So if I were to change this to C21 Social Marketing instead, and check it, it's going to come back and say many more things are unavailable. WordPress is taken, Posturus is taken, Flavors is taken. We'll come back and say Facebook is taken, YouTube is taken, all of that. Okay? So if you're considering making this a big part of your marketing, you should think about the cross-platform naming that goes into it. Okay? And then the other thing you should think about is, are there enough resources to make it, let's see, I've got someone saying that there's no audio. Can anyone else hear me? If you're capable of hearing me, if you could write a comment, that would be really great. I would definitely appreciate that. Yes, someone else can hear me. So uh, Armando, I'm not sure, and other people can hear me. So I'm sorry, maybe turn up your speakers. Everyone can hear me. Okay, I'm good. I'm glad everybody can hear me now. Um, so the other thing that you should think about is, are there enough resources to make it easy? Because you don't want to be coming up with the content for this all the time. Um, you want to be able to find resources that you can just copy and paste, add your own information to, etc. So if I were considering doing a blog or a Facebook page about San Diego entertainment, concerts, um, movies that are taping, anything like that, what I would want to do is go to my best friend Google and look around and see what's available for that. And the best way to do it is just type in what you're looking for, San Diego Live Entertainment. And I'd want to look around and see here's the reader keeps up information about it, Sign on San Diego, things to do from Sign on San Diego keeps up about it. There's a lot of stuff there that I would be able to come in and copy and paste from. Um, and, and there'll be resources available to make it easy. If you find that you're, you pick something that's a little bit too narrow, a little bit too much of a niche, maybe expand out a little bit and see. Otherwise, you're going to be the one coming up with the content to um, help, your, help your fans along and to provide information. Okay, so in thinking about that, I'm going to create a community organization that's going to be XYZ Gated Community. 
And it's also going to ask you to agree to the Facebook page's terms. Now we're going to click on that because there's some things in here that are pretty important. And the big one is that only an authorized representative of the subject may administer the page. Now this goes back to the same idea behind um, what we were talking about earlier with the no commercial. Is Facebook really cracking down on pages that are too broad like San Diego real estate? No. But if somebody complains or if Facebook decides to crack down, are you pretty much out of luck? Yes. So the recommendation for becoming an authorized representative of the subject is to go own a portion of that name. And the best way to do it is by purchasing a URL. Okay? So for example, um, I am doing a page that's called San Diego Cheap Eats. And it's just kind of in its infancy right now. And all I do is I repost about um, lunch and dinner discounts throughout San Diego. Do I own Cheap Eats in San Diego? No. Does anybody really own that? But what I did do is I went to GoDaddy and I purchased sdcheapeats.com. So if Facebook ever says, hey, we don't think you're really the rightful owner of this, I say, no, see, look, I own this URL. I have stake on the name. Okay? That's not going to solve it for everything, but you know, that's, a, that's a good thing to think about. So make sure that you try your best to make yourself an authorized representative of the subject. Okay? So you're going to click I agree, and you're going to click get started. And then from here, you're going to notice that it's very similar to when you set up your Facebook profile initially. It's going to ask you to add an image. It's going to ask you to suggest a friend so that they can get connected with your page. It's going to ask you to post status updates. It's going to ask you to add a like box. You can set up Facebook mobile, Facebook by text, all of that stuff. Okay? So that's the entire process of actually physically creating the page. Everything else is kind of downhill from there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at one of the live pages that I have so that we can see some kind of live examples of things here. Okay. Let me close out a few windows. And we're going to look at the social marketing page. So at this point, anything that I type in here is going to come out from Social Marketing at Century 21 Awards. And it's pretty much exactly the same as when you post something on your regular Facebook. If you want to add a link, you're going to click into the link box and paste your link or just paste it somewhere else. Like if I wanted to add a link to uh, this page here. And then you have space to add your two cents and send it out there. Okay? If you want to add a photo, it's exactly the same. If you want to add a photo album, it's exactly the same. This box here, the only difference is that when you're on the page, it's going to come out from your business, not from you. Okay? Same thing when you comment on something. If I were to write a comment here, do you think this is overkill or in the best interest of the user? add an H in there. When I comment, you see it comes out from social marketing and not from Tasha. Okay? So that's the first big awesome thing about it. Second thing is that it's made it very easy for you to be able to track what's happening with your pages. Okay? So you'll see over on the side here, I've got a space that says admins. That's going to show you anybody that's got space to um, work with this page from an administrative point of view, to post things, to edit the information, to change the picture, all of that. Okay? So one of the sections below says notifications. And if I click on that, it's going to show me, just like I see regular Facebook notifications, it's going to show me anything that's happened. So if I got a comment on a post, it'll share that with me. If I got a like on a post, it'll share that with me. Okay? It also gives you the prompt to purchase an ad. And then there's a space to view insights, which is where you can see different statistics about your page, clicks, users, demographics, all of that stuff. And the button at the top says, Use Facebook as Social Marketing at Century 21 Award. And this button is very, very interesting. And it's really something that a lot of you probably won't work with too much until you're comfortable. But I want to give you a little peek into what it looks like. So if I click on Use Facebook as Social Marketing, still, anything I post is going to come from Social marketing, just like normal, any comments that I make. However, if I go into my news feed, I'm going to see anything that my page has liked. And then I'll be able to comment as my page. So for example, if I wanted to look at this free Friday live online marketing or a training session from Century 21 Learning, 
If I go in to make a comment, this training is so useful. I'll be sharing it with my franchise. So now when I post that, it comes out from Social Marketing at Century 21 Awards. And this is a great way for you to share your brand, to share the page that you've created, to interact with other pages, and kind of to build awareness, as well as to work on things from a professional point of view versus from um, just, you know, Tasha Bezdeka, I'm a person point of view, okay? Same thing if I were to go into Welcome New Recruits and leave a, com a comment here. So great to meet you all. I know you'll be fantastic. So now social marketing is making this comment, not Tasha. That's a really great way to kind of um, cross market to work with other businesses on a business to business level. Okay. Now the other thing is you'll see up here that I've got a number two. And instead of saying friend request like it normally does, when I hover over it, it says likes. So when I click on that, it's going to show me these two people have recently liked my page. Okay. So you'll be able to see the list of people who have liked it. You won't have a message button like you normally do. And then in the notifications, again, like on the page, it'll show you notifications. When you're all done, you want to go back to using Facebook as you. Under account, switch back to yourself as a user, and everything will go back to normal for you. Okay? So at this time, I'm going to take a pause for questions, if anybody's got one so far. And then what, otherwise, what I'd like to talk to you about is how do I make this easy? Finding the resources if you're going to hire out different services that are available to help you. Okay? I don't see any questions, so let's take a look at a couple of the resources that I've got for you here. So the first thing, and if you guys have been in my trainings before, is that there are four steps to social media success. Let's see, can I give more tips for choosing a good name? You know, it really comes down to your target audience and uh, if, it's, if it's an area. 99 plus is still pretty popular. I wouldn't bother going with the 365. It's really been overdone at this point. But think about the communities you serve. Think about um, the things that you're interested in doing. You know, it could be as specific as um, San Diego yachting or, or something like that, or as broad as XYZ Community um, Information Center, you know, and, and including information on everything that's happening in that community from what's happening at the schools, to the sports teams, to community events, garage sales, all of that. So really you just need to think about um, the people that you're trying to reach and what their interest level is. Okay? I see a lot of people coming out with, you know, Joe Schmo, comma, realtor and creating that's what their page is. And you know, that's really just it's not very compelling um, for people to connect with, you know. So looking at these four steps to social media success, and I'll let you guys know I stole these from Nicole Nikolai, a.k.a. Nick Nick, um, and they're tried and true for whatever service you're going to be using, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, a blog, anything like that. So the first step is going to be to determine your topics. What are the things that you want to talk about? So thinking about this community page that you're creating centered around a specific location. The topics might be the school. The topics might be local businesses. The topics might be um, events happening around the community. The topics might be sports teams. Keep a list of the topics that you are interested in. Um, let's see. After you've figured out your topics, the next thing you're going to look at are resources. Okay? And this is kind of what we talked about earlier with making sure that there are enough resources to help you out with the content. Who is already talking about these things and bookmarking them? So on the one hand, you can most definitely use Google to help you find resources. And then think about the specific topics. Like, for example, with the one that we're working on, I would look for the school websites. I would look for the sports team's websites. I would look for local businesses and all of that. Okay. <clears throat> and then the next thing you're going to do is schedule your updates. You can either use the bookmarks or you can use two services that we're going to talk about called the Roost app and Hootsuite. And then the last thing we're going to do is be spontaneous. This is the point where you keep an eye on your feeds you use your smartphone to take pictures um, of things and share them or to um, post on the go. And kind of, you know, besides the regular informational stuff that you've put out, you're just going to use your smartphone or use your computer smartly and share things that way. Okay? 
So I've got a couple questions here. The first one is how do you bookmark? I'm using a web um, browser called Google Chrome. If you're using Google Chrome, it's super easy to bookmark. There's a little star up here. And all you have to do is click it, and it's going to add a bookmark. Otherwise, you remove it. If you're using Internet Explorer, I believe, let's see here. Let's figure out, since I know most of you are using Internet Explorer, bookmark, quick key. Quick key. There's a similar button for adding a bookmark in Internet Explorer. I know there's a quick key. I'm not seeing it at this moment. Let's see here, bookmark. I'll tell you what, I'll address that at the end, Kathleen. I have another question. I've created a business page. I'm, however, confused on how to invite people to view my page and how to post to the page from other sites that have Facebook posting capabilities this is from D. Um, so D, when it comes to inviting people to your page, so the first thing that you need to do is to like your page. That'll, first of all, share with people that you have created this and you're a fan of it. The next thing that you can do, just like sharing any link on Facebook, is you can share the link to your page. I'm going to copy that and go back into my Facebook home here. Are you connected? Get social media updates and tips right in your Facebook stream. And then share the link and post it out that way. So that works as well. Um, that's really going to be the best thing to do besides letting people know, sending out an email, adding it to your email signature, adding it to flyers you create. Really word of mouth is going to be one of the best ways to spread. And one of the great things is if somebody clicks and likes my page, it's going to go out in their news feed as ABC person likes Social Marketing at Century 21 Award. And then people who see that in their stream can then click on it, decide if it's something that they like, etc. Okay. Will other people be able to post on the wall? Yes, they will. And that's why you have handy little delete remove functions. You'll find spam will come onto your pages every once in a while. That's really um, kind of gone away recently. But for example, if I were to go to um, the award marketing page, you'll see I'm not an admin on this page. So if I were to write something here, love the May specials, it goes out just like that, okay? And people will be able to see just posts by award marketing design or the most recent posts, which will include mine. Now, if you look at pages like Starbucks, big brand pages, you'll find people posting on their walls all the time. And a lot of the time, Starbucks doesn't um, comment back or like it or anything like that. Um, but you guys, because your fan page will likely be a lot less than 6 million people, if somebody posts, you know, it's a good idea to comment back on it, like it, etc. And like I said, if something's inappropriate, if spam gets posted, that's what these X buttons are for, to get rid of things like that. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. I'm unsure if I understand how this would help my business. Would my information show as a realtor? So there is space for you to write your information in there. And that's all going to be filled out once you create your page. So let's go back to my XYZ, my page that I created here. First of all, the information that you're going to be sending is going to be information that is useful to you to know as a realtor, to share with people. Because part of being a realtor is being very familiar with the area that you're in. Okay. So also when you go to fill out your information, let me edit my information here, there's going to be information such as the address about description, mission. Depending on the type of service that you select, for example here I chose community organization, if I were to instead select professional service or real estate, it's going to ask me different questions. It's going to ask me hours, descriptions, price range, email, phone, website, contact, all of that. This is going to be one place for you to share the information. 
Also, you're definitely going to want to share the information about your new listings, about open houses, as well as sharing information that proves that you are knowledgeable about your community, such as events, activities, etc. Okay? When I send out links to my business page, the link defaults to my personal page and not my business page URL. How can I ensure they link to the business page? So at this point, if we go back and view my page, you'll see my page is facebook.com slash pages slash XYZ gated community and about a billion numbers. Okay? Um, this would be the link that you're going to share with people. All right? Once you've garnered 25 total fans, you're able to change what's called your username. And that's how you get to facebook.com slash B21 social marketing. Okay? Um, that would be the link that you're going to send out to people. If you're unsure, you want to make sure you test it. I'm going to copy this link, open up a new tab, and paste it. And it should take me directly back to that Facebook page as soon as it loads up here. Okay, same thing. If I were to go directly to C21 Social Marketing, it's going to take me directly to that page. Okay? Now, the place that you can find that is going to be under Edit Page under marketing, and under alias. They call it an alias now. So if you've already set a username, it's going to say, OK, here's what your username is. If you haven't, it's going to ask you to type in something and check the availability. Make sure that you spell check. Make sure that you're happy with what it says, um, because once you set it, that's it. You get no second chances. Okay. Another question I have, can I post other realtors listings only with their express written permission? Okay, just like with any other um, information that you're doing, any other advertising has to do with their express written permission. And then someone else asked, having a Century 21 logo on our business page, is that recommended? It's entirely up to you. Um, and you can also create your own. If you guys look, um, or if you notice, you'll see that I've done some working with my logo here. All this is is a picture that I created in a um, file. There are templates available for you all over the place. You can build them in Microsoft Publisher. And you can have this look like or say whatever you like it to. Okay, so this has got a bunch of, they're not links, but the information, my pictures there, the logos there. Other websites, if you look at like the 99, even though this is a realtor's page, it's just a picture of the gas lamp. If you were to look at the 365, even though it's a realtor's page, it's just the 365 things to do logo. Okay. These are all places where if you're not comfortable yourself or you don't want to put out the work of creating a logo, those are all things that you can hire out for. You can look for um, people to do that for you on websites like Elance um, or even Craigslist. You can look for a graphic designer um, to all handle that. When does copyright violation come into play? Kathleen, can you be a little bit more specific? Do you mean in terms of sharing things, in terms of um, posting things on the page? Because really the big thing about the internet is that that's all everyone is doing is sharing things, sharing things and posting. Okay? If you're truly concerned about it, you'll see a lot of people writing things like via you know, XYZ News or via Mashable, etc. But when somebody clicks on a link, let's say that I send them to Mashable. And let's say that I want to share whatever news article comes up first, see what it is. When I share this link on Facebook, whether it's from my personal Facebook or from my business Facebook, when somebody clicks on it, whether or not I've written something about it, it's going to take them back to that website. So very rarely will you come into any issue with copyright violation. Where you will come into issue with is if I were to copy and paste this article, put it on my own website, and say that I wrote it. That's a definite copyright violation. Okay. So I'm going to leave the questions for a couple minutes because I want to talk a little bit more about the how do I make this easy. Now we went over the four steps, topics, resources, scheduling, and spontaneity. And I told you there were two things that I wanted to share with you in terms of the scheduling part of it. And the first is a really excellent service called the Roost Real Estate um, tab or the, the Roost Social Media Toolkit. You can get to it by going to facebook.com slash Roost app. Get there directly. And Roost does plenty of webinars on the application itself, on services, on Facebook, etc. Once you've added it to your page, which you will click this button here, Add to My Page, you're going to be able to go to the application. 
And the application lets you do a lot of really cool things. And the one that they've come out with recently that is most amazing is called the campaign. Okay? So if I go into create a campaign here, it's going to take me to their website. I've already created an account, so we're going to go ahead and log in. And creating a campaign is exactly what it sounds like. Okay? It's going to ask me, do I want to do a single post? If so, why did you go all the way to Roost instead of just posting it? Or do I want to create a campaign? When I click on campaign, it's going to ask me a series of questions. The first one is, where is this going to post to? And whatever pages that you've authorized for the Roost app are going to come up here. So I'm going to post to my Century 21 Facebook. I'm going to go to the next step. Then it's going to ask me, how long do I want this campaign to go? I want this campaign to go for 14 days. I want it to begin on the 15th. And my post should come out between 10 and we'll say 6. And I'm going to go to the next step. Then it's going to recommend different types of posts that I should have. They're going to say, all right, you should have X amount of posts with links, X amount of posts with just status updates, X amount of posts with questions, X amount with photos, etc. And there'll be a button here that says Add. And what Roost has done has given you the opportunity to either add your own link, if you know of something that you want to share, like the one that we had talked about, or they've amassed a series of different websites and links for you to add. So right now I'm looking at the CNN real estate source. And I can go through and look at all the articles that they've pulled from CNN real estate. So I want to do foreclosure down for the seven straight months. And I can add my own information. Do you feel the difference in the market? Foreclosures are down, says CNN. And I'm going to click Save. So it's going to post that out for me at some point during that period. So I can add another one if I like. Same thing with the status updates. It's going to let me type in whatever I want. What a glorious day in Southern California. And click Save. Now I would continue to do this until I filled up the number that they recommend. Okay? I would go into the next step. And it's going to ask me to name the campaign. Go into the next step. And then if I like, I can add something called the Roost Bar, which is kind of cool. What the Roost Bar does is when it takes somebody to that link that they've clicked off, off of your site, there is going to be a bar up at the top with a button for them to click like on your Facebook. Okay? And it's going to remind them of where this came from, and your profile picture will be there, the picture for your Facebook page. Okay? You can include the Roost Bar if you like. And then hit Post. And that's all there is to it. It's going to go ahead and post on your behalf those things during that time period. And it'll share them with you what it posts out. Okay? So that's one really great way to schedule things out in advance. Using the Roost app, you can also, let me get back into Roost app here. You can also schedule your own posting campaigns to go out without using their campaign builder. Okay? Um, what that's going to look like is under the Publishing tab. And it's going to let me add a comment, add a URL if I want, and then I have the ability to schedule it. And it's going to say, when do you want this to go out, what time, click Add, and then you determine where you want it to go to. and then click Send, and it'll go out on that date on your behalf. Okay? So if you're going to be using just Facebook, Roost is a really great way to do that. You do have another option, one that I'm a really big fan of, and that's a website called Hootsuite. What Hootsuite lets you do is connect up to five different profiles from different websites. Okay? So I've got three Twitter accounts and two Facebook pages. If you want more than five, you can pay for their upgraded Roost account. Roost not only lets you kind of streamline how you see different things, but it also lets you schedule things in advance. So just like before, this is the page that I'm going to share. I would type it in there, type it in with my update, and I'm going to select whatever services I want it to send to. And I can either send it now, 
or I can click on the calendar and schedule it. So I'm going to schedule this out for tomorrow. And to make it easy for me, I'm just going to schedule it for one page. And then I'll be able to see wherever, whatever account I scheduled it in, I'll be able to see that sitting there waiting. I can edit it or I can delete it. Okay. So those are the ways that you're going to schedule, either by using Hootsuite, by using Roof. Um, those are the two most popular ways. There are other services that you can use that are similar, but those are the ones that I would recommend. And your last option would be to use an RSS um, feed system. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, and that's what it is. So the website that I like is called Deliverit, D-L-V-R dot I-T. And Deliverit, as you can see, I've got the Century 21 blog in here, but I've also got a stream in my social marketing account, which is where you see all of these things coming in that I didn't post. Anything that says it's from Deliverit came from that service. So what Deliverit asked me to do is add streams from a website. So for example, if I wanted the streams from Sign on San Diego, I'm going to look for Sign on San Diego RSS feed. And here's the news feed for Sign on San Diego. Do I want the latest news, the local news, the business? all of that stuff. So you select which one you like. Okay. So if I want latest news, all I'm going to do is copy this link. And I'm going to add the feed URL. And save it. And then if things come up from Scion San Diego, they're going to be automatically published to my website. Okay. So you can build out things that way as well. Okay. So I'm going to, once again, Take a pause here and stop for questions. I haven't seen any new ones come up. I don't see any hands raised. So remember, the most important thing is that you're thinking about your audience. And you don't need to have a huge amount of people um, connected to you to be effective. What you want is an amount of people that are um, communicating with you and interacting with you. Okay. So think about what service you're providing. Think about the people who are going to connect. Someone says, how often to add things? OK. Um, you know, once a day is good. At least, I would say, four or five times a week. Um, what you don't want is for something to be stale and to sit for forever. Um, and deliver it post to my Facebook. So all of these here that say via deliver it, that was posted on my behalf from Mashable or from Social Media um, Examiner. How many hours per day on social media? It depends on your system. If you're a person that doesn't do any scheduling, you're going to spend forever on it because you're going to come in, you're going to read some stuff, you're going to post some stuff, you're going to bookmark some stuff. But if you're a person that sticks to a schedule, you can come in, say on, let's make Monday your social media day. And you determine that you're going to take one hour to focus on social media for your week. That's when you're going to look at the different um, posts. You're going to look at the sites that you bookmarked. And that's when you're going to do your scheduling. So for that one hour a week, then you don't have to worry about posting for the rest of the week. And then when you have time, you know, when you need a quick break, go into Facebook and scroll through the feed. See if anything else um, has been posted that you want to comment on. Okay? How do I attach links at the top of the page, like LinkedIn, WordPress, Twitter? These here are actually not links. All these are, are pictures. And if you click on it, underneath it says, here's a link on where to get to it. So all they are are pictures that I've added. Similar to if we look at the Century 21 page. Get rid of that one. So here we've got Join Our Team. Somebody clicks on Join Our Team. I don't know why it's not staying up there. Let's try a different one. Oh, Facebook is breaking down. Stay up. There we go. OK, so all it is is a picture. And then down below in the caption section of the picture, there are links in there. Okay, so that's all that is, is I just added pictures to it. You'll see that with a lot of different websites. Um, the other thing is that with these pictures here, every time someone comes to the page, they'll be in a different order. See here we've got relocation first. And now we've got search for a home first. So you're not able to do something that, say, spells a word out because it's never going to be the same. 
who created those boxes I did. Their pictures that I created. Okay. Okay, so like I said, the most important thing is that you're thinking about your audience and you're thinking about providing content that's going to be useful and worthwhile. Um, it's not about the number of fans you have. It's about how much you interact with them. Invite people out. You know, bring your um, laptop out to open houses that you do. Have your um, little stick in your computer so you can be connected to the Internet. And when somebody comes in, ask them, oh, would you like to connect to my Facebook page so that you can get information about this area that you're looking in um, delivered to your Facebook screen? You know, think about different ways to get this in front of people. Okay. Um, other places for you guys to get information, of course, there's always Google. Mashable is a great resource. And uh, we were talking about Roost earlier. The guys at Roost put on a ton of really great webinars all the time. Well, let me see if I can get their webinar list up here. They like to do things in like 20 minute sections, whereas I'm a little bit more long winded. So if you go to the Roost page, facebook.com slash Roost, and see webinars, they've got a whole list of different webinars that you can take on, a, on an ongoing basis. Um, don't forget YouTube. Don't forget Google. There are plenty of places for you guys to get help. And don't forget that you're always welcome to shoot me an email. My email is socialmarketing at century21award.com. And I really look forward to seeing the types of pages that you guys create. Okay. So I don't see any other questions coming in. So I hope all of you have a really fantastic weekend. What's the next big thing, and is it recorded? Yes, this is recorded, so you can watch it later. Um, and what's the next big thing? What Do you mean the next webinar that I'm doing? Do you mean the next service that's going to be really popular like Facebook? In social media. I like the all caps. Thank you. Um, the next big thing I would say is the, um, I would say it's going to be the geo stuff, the things that are coming out like Foursquare, like, um, the services that let you attach your location to things, those are becoming really popular. And from the user's perspective, it's a big incentive for a business um, to bring people in. When will this be posted? Um, probably this weekend at some point. And can I explain how to make the pictures? Um, that's a whole another topic. I'll see about making a video for that. It depends on the type of software that you use. I use it in advanced editing software. Um, but you, it's just like uploading a regular picture. And how long have I been doing this? I've been in this job since October 2009. Okay. So thanks, everybody, for sticking with me this afternoon. And I hope you all have a really great weekend. And I really look forward to seeing all the things that you create. And feel free to send your links to me because I want to see what you guys are working on. All right. So have a great one, and I will see you all later.